education is in your rooms and behind screens is um, we're really keen and really excited to give you an interactive component to, uh, to the workshop. So we're going to get you up and away from your computers, even though you're using phones. And what I want to do is to give you a little bit of background to, to this thing called Be We Do. And essentially, um, where Be We Do comes from is from the martial art of Aikido. And what I did when I did the PhD was I combined uh, the martial art of Aikido or the Japanese martial art of Aikido leadership and co-creation and thought, if I could crunch those together, what do I get? And what emerged out of that was what you're going to be doing in about 20 minutes. And what I, if I can summarize what I learned when I was training in Aikido for about five years was that I learned that it just wasn't about techniques. And there's, there's a Shihan called Saratomi and he says, quote, when someone grabs your wrist, it does not signify the beginning of attack. It means the beginning of a conversation, end quote. And I thought that was quite interesting because everybody just thinks it's about throwing people around and Steven Seagal and something like that, but it's a little, little bit more to it. The other thing that I found really interesting about doing Aikido, and perhaps the most inter interesting part for me personally was, is that the whole idea of Aikido is that you what you learn on the mat, you take off the mat and other challenges you face in life. So you apply those philosophies or, or theories beyond the dojo and whatever you're doing, whether it be police work, education, psychology, and or in this case, um, design critiques. So what we're gonna do today is nothing like this. Um, this is Aikido. So what I wanted to clarify up front was that Biwido is not Aikido. This is more what we're going to be doing. And what we do is I basically take one exercise that I learned doing the martial art and we apply it to transform conversations using movement. So that's what we do. And so it's, uh, even though it's similar, like very different. So I felt like maybe one of the interesting things is, is to go back a little bit and think, well, why? What, why have a come? Why, why do I even consider this as an idea? And I think what's interesting is to consider how there are other types of arts based communities of practice that also work together and create together using similar things to the martial arts of Aikido. So we can look at something like Taiko, which is another martial art, which is about drumming, Japanese drumming. And we look at that and what they do is it's about repeti repetitive, repetitive action involved in the, in the drumming itself, blurs the boundaries between the drum space and the person, as well as providing the drummer with an expanded experience of their selves in relation to the whole. You know, and again, I'm looking at these and I'm showing those things and I'm trying to get you to kind of consider an experience like this or the way that they participate in an experience like this in relation to the idea of design critique. Another area or another type of practice um, that's art space that is also kind of exciting in relation to what I learned was dancing. And some of you may well be dancers. And we think about dancing and we look at this sort of picture here, you can tell that the body or the moving body is a visual medium because it's seen by others. It can convey and represent ideas and dancers use the stage, the props and their bodies to perform and through things like gestures, touch, sound, and body movement. So they communicate through the body. They don't have to communicate through words. Um, so they use their bodies to communicate and to come up with ideas together. Whoops. You know, very similar, in a similar way, musicians are the same. You know, they, they're individual musicians, but together they use their, the music, collaborates with the sound, the instrument and the performer work together. And as a group, they co-create together. So it's just not one performer, they work together as a whole. And you'd hope, or well, ideally, the best design critique would be something similar to like a jazz band where no one's in control, where you're working together in, in a, as a fine in a rhythm. Um, I also looked at even things like improvisation or improv. And when you look at it and you think about why is that useful for co-creation, um, you know, it's a really, it's probably the, I feel the closest one to Aikido because it's about making things up as we go along or to think on one's feet, to be able to co-create 
in an instant to respond and adapt. And that's very much about kind of um, the martial arts and certainly jazz and all and, and dance. We all work together with other people to co-create together. And I think it's kind of useful to look at that and to consider how um, the arts give us models that perhaps we don't think about enough in relation to what we do as designers and illustrators and painters. We can learn a lot from those areas. So a good way to summarize what you're going to be doing is that it's not a sitting down writing things on pieces of paper type of ex experience. There's no post-its. So from a design from a design thinking point of view, it's kind of the opposite. It's the other end of design thinking. It's design thinking in a way, but it's uh, completely different. So I thought I'd show you kind of a, uh, a very quick capture of a 90 minute session, and it'll give you an idea of how we move ideas around the room. So we start with a question, and then all of a sudden people pair up and they talk and use hand gestures and movements to move, literally move ideas around the room. You can see that um, everybody's, everybody has an equal part to play. No one's in charge. Um, they pair up, they change pairs. And at the end, we share what we learned in that experience. And what you also notice there is in terms of the research and in terms of the research of where it came from in the Aikido part is that the way that we, that one of the key links to the martial arts is the idea of touch. And in this instance, um, back in 2019, touch in, in this side, Bibido was just by a simple tap of the wrist, which you would have seen when you saw them moving around. So no doubt some of you um, read that reading I put up online. And what it does, it just gives you a really quick, uh, sort of a, um, a description of how what you're about to experience works. Although in these days in 2019, um, it was very much about a physical sort of an experience rather than the virtual one we've got today. But I think three quotes, I pulled out three quotes that I thought were kind of interesting in relation to what we experienced yesterday and also um, what we're about to do. So if you read those. The thing I like about it was, is it, it's the idea that the movement enriches the conversation. Am I moving the conversation or are you moving it? I'm pretty so, sure I was in that one. You probably are. Yeah, you're not the bald one, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I do find when you look at the picture like this is no one not talking. Um, so everybody is working 100% towards whatever the, the idea is of that session. So no one, conversations don't drift. Everybody's there and they're working 100% to get somewhere in terms of conversation. Here's one in Japan. And what was interesting about this is that quite often people say that when they undertake a Biwido experience, it's more about collaboration than confrontation. So which is really interesting in terms of the animated GIF exercise we did yesterday and some of the ones you put up there where you were, I think there was somebody who had a gun in their mouth. It was like they dread critiques. And this one, there's lots of laughter and it's kind of a, an enjoyable, fun experience. It's not about um, winning or losing. You were definitely there, Andre. Um, yep. The other thing that I think to end on those three quotes um, is that it's really important when I think about back to the martial art and kind of what you're about to experience is it's, it's action beyond the self and in relation to other people. So when I'm working and collaborating with you and having a conversation, it's, it's less about me, it's more about us. It's less about the ego. And in fact, it's kind of a good ego smasher. So you're forced to work with somebody instead of extract value out of them, which I think is kind of, again, when I think about design critiques, it's kind of rare. So when you read the reading, you would probably would have found pretty, pretty easily that there were three key findings and I won't go through, through those, you can read them yourself. But one of the big points I make in the paper that I want people to consider um, is 
that one of the critiques I have of design thinking in a contemporary sense is it's very much a, uh, a cognitive sort of bias to it. It's very much about the brain. It's about sitting around tables and thinking a lot. And what I feel Bibido does well is that it, um, it combines not only the mind, but the body and the environment. If we could use all three of these things at the same time, like you did when you showed us around your flats and took us and showed us the uh, forest outside your bedrooms and stuff, you know, it just changes everything. It's um, instead of just looking at a screen, looking at some post-its, you know, I think it, it enriches it if we can bring all three of those spaces into the conversation and use those to co-create. So everything was going very well. And then COVID happened, as we all know, unfortunately. So at that stage, just before COVID, um, the Biwido approach used touch. And it also had a developed a non-touch version because of the whole, often there was issues in terms of gender and um, government departments and stuff like that. And then we started to develop a socially distanced version. And then Andre and I um, put in for a conference uh, in Brisbane where we were going to take, go and do a Biwido physical experience in Brisbane as part of the DRS conference. And we were pretty excited then COVID happened and all changed. And they said to us, well, there's no conference, it's all virtual. Can you convert your workshop into a virtual event? And we said, well, you're going, we're not really sure. But we thought about it and we thought, well, yeah, what the heck, let's have a try. And Andre's always up for anything. And so we developed this virtual version. So we had a number of coffees and we thought about, well, you know, can we take the type of way, so we use gestures and movement and convert it for a, a phone environment? You know, can, can we create a simple gestural interface that can still do the same things? Um, we did a lot of experiments and prototypes. Um, some of you may remember that in my, in my sort of introduction earlier yesterday, I pointed at the bigger letters. So uh, we did lots of prototypes around the space here, experimenting with, um, can this thing even work? And then we did it. And so we, uh, we got a number of people um, to get involved. What you'll see on the person on the top left, these are five, four, four people involved in a conversation. Um, there's Andre and I on the right, and then on the left is a woman in a hotel in Sydney, and in the bottom left is a woman in her house in Melbourne. And what we did is we had a Biwido conversation using our phones and moving around either a hotel room, I was at work, Andre was in his flat back in, in a suburb of, of, um, of Wellington, and we had a conversation interrogating a question for the conference by moving around our spaces and having a conversation and it worked, it was kind of cool. And, and this is one of the views we had from the phone as well. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, Kushnod had um, some issues trying to get a rear vision thing happening on a phone, but it still, still worked from the, that point of view. And one of the things that came out of it at the end was this lovely quote. It's always so wonderful to share a view versus just talking at somebody. Obviously, conversation can be more accessible that way, especially when we are, when we are across time and space, which is kind of rewarding the idea that um, um, there was more than just sitting at a sitting looking at a computer screen. There was something that we so there was some value in actually getting up and moving around and talking. It, it kind of works. And so, what we want to do is to pick up on um, kind of what you were doing automatically yesterday, really. Um, I took a few screen grabs, as you can see, as we were doing our intros yesterday. And, uh, and we almost do it all, not quite naturally where we point at stuff and we indicate with by using gestures and hands and stuff like that um, to get people's attention or direct people's attention to something. And so it was happening yesterday. So I took a few examples, took a few screen grabs to show you that kind of what you did yesterday is almost kind of a little bit of a, a very heavy hint of what we're about to do now on our phones through Zoom. So I figure, are you up for trying this? I reckon we just do it. Should we just do it? 